answers or, or embodiment on themes like power and domination and oppression and manipulation, they are so deeply rooted in our behavior. This instinctive, animalistic, um, archaic approach creates this, this intense physical language, um, which I use a lot uh, on stage. I'm asking from the dancers this, this intense embodiment and I do that through asking them to perform with a reality on stage. That doesn't mean there's anything real on stage, it means the physicality. So if you fall, you fall. You don't fake the fall. Having a sense of urgency and uh, instinctiveness. When I use images of or, or metaphors of power and control and, and aggression or um, uh, manipulation, I use them in a way that the dramaturgical build up is um, following that, in the sense that this reality on stage, I push the dancers to their maximum, to their limits. I push the audience, I, um, I do that by repetition or by duration or by intensity or having an uncomfortable length or situation or image on stage so that the audience is really impacted by that um, and then I can decide on the right moment in the dramaturgical line of the piece to soften it or to let go of the pressure or to you know to, to calm that down <laughs> I'm seeking for a pureness, an unwritten page, um, the unvoiced, the unscripted, which is not weakness, but it is a strength. I believe in overcoming um, rejection or dismissal through vulnerability. And for me, that, that is a, you know, that's courage, that's hope. It is about the face, the expression, the, the, the dream state or the inner focus rather than the outer focus. Um, it is the tactility, the, it's the, the, the details of smell, of, of hearing. Um, so I create a sort of inner taupe, out, not, a, not a biotope, not outside in a big, big world, but very pure in, in, in inner focus that suggests vulnerability. So I need to generate a lot of darkness to show that one little 
sparkle. I'm fascinated by anonymity, the loss or the hidden identity, and also by the fact that you can then reveal it. For me, this is a reflection of society, you know, the, the not the unknown, not, not understanding, not able to grasp. Um, it's very connected with fear, actually, and um, for me, I use it, also use it as a way to 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 make something more abstract or um, to create an invisible force, an ungraspable force. The moment you take away someone's face you concentrate much more on looking at someone's body and body language we feel less comfortable because we cannot really categorize or specify that character and the intention of that character and the potential behavior towards us With revealing the masks, you create space for the audience to breathe again. There is a sensory enhancement and an enlightenment of um, recognition. The, the tactility increases. Um, there is an honesty again. This this superpower or this this you know ungraspability of a character softens and and you feel the truth is is exposing itself so to open up to take off a mask is a big gesture and can be uh, used in a catharsis in a in a very uplifting way The connection between life and death and infinity is a recurring theme. I really feel I can live more intensely with the notion of death being very close and very present all the time. It intensifies my life. Life and death are always in dialogue with each other. Um, there is no life without death. Metaphors are, are phenomenal because they trigger, they trigger experiences, they trigger uh, memories and um, these images of dream worlds uh, are all in our collective minds, are, are in my mind, are in our collective bodies stored. Um, so this universal language we are all uh, connected with um, creates a bond between our deepest feelings. The idea of eternity is the possibility for dreaming. So it's the space of potential.
and, and infinity is for me the, the desire to stop time, um, to not actually pass from one state to the other, yet there is only transformation, there's only process and progress. If not, there is only death. So I'm, I'm fascinated about moving from state to state and um, talking about the essence of my being with my dancers. I love, I love this very much because I'm always searching for freedom, for an endlessness, for this idea of uh, constantly being born um, versus this great contrast of uh, resistance, of, of pressure. Um, so this idea of no boundaries, the pure potential, the space to, to, to be free. In the choreography, I try to bring this state of weightlessness on stage through partnering, lifting each other, all sorts of materials and techniques to suggest an infinite um, freedom and weightlessness. To achieve this state of freedom, it is quite a physical work um, the dancers and, and, and me need to do. Uh, to suggest lightness needs actually a lot of muscles. To train, to hang upside down needs a, a lot of commitment and um, courage and physical strength. So it is quite a, an opposite in the process. It is a, a very tough process to actually reach this state of lightness, uh, weightlessness or infinity. I portray often this invisible inner world as I find it very interesting to dive in the psyche of, uh, of a person and to understand the behavior, like why do people do the things they do. As I learned from the painter Francis Bacon, it's not always what you show or what you paint, it is what you don't paint. So shadows, invisibilities, echoes, um, there is something very mysterious to that. To, to find a physical language for these 
you know, echoes of ourselves or shadows of ourselves or this, this inner, inner uh, darkness to somehow put that on stage is a, is a mysterious process on its own. It is about trust together. of light, through the use of the space, uh, through uh, obviously darkness, uh, through hidden doors, uh, hidden exits and entrances, through disappearing behind each other or in each other, around each other, through the ceiling uh, uh, or, or through the floor. I use anything I can to not give away the technique. So there is a huge gap between backstage and the optical illusion the audience gets to experience. Transformation for me means these cycles, you know, rituals, the opportunity to become something else. An end doesn't exist. There is no such thing as an end. It, an end is always a new beginning. It's always a transition, a, a process. Uh, it's liquid. It moves into a new chapter. I find it extremely beautiful to change. I never like to stay what I am or what I know today. I'm, I want to, to explore and that journey is what I'm sharing with, with my viewers, with, with the audience. The journey of ritual, of change, of recreation and transformation. Performers, they all have an individual journey uh, on stage, but they also have a collective experience, and collectively they go through, you know, the stages of the the, the, the near physical impossibility of of dancing a work or singing a work. This it's it's a ritual of I don't know. Of, cleansing, of healing, of writing history together. It's together going into a space we cannot tap into alone or individually. And doing that together with an audience is what, what really is the thread of life, you know, the, the magic, the, the, the connection we all share. And, um, and that is the world of, of feelings and the world of dreams and of desires. <laughs> 